In this video, we want to continue on with the project setup for making use of the actual online subsystem for EOS, or in this case, the EOS online subsystem. So basically, if you've used the null subsystem or the Steam online subsystem, it's the setup's very similar. So it's the same kind of stuff. You just make modifications to your config default engine dot any. So your configuration here. As you can see, here's a bunch of stuff that has already been configured. We need to add a couple more things to tell, basically to tell our game, our, our project here, what online subsystem to use, as well as the net driver we are going to use. So if you head here to, well, basically if you just search EOS online subsystem plugin, hopefully this page will come up. But if we scroll down and go a little bit farther, plugin project settings, here's our engine settings. So we want to make sure we have these all configured. So basically your engine dot or default engine dot any file should now contain your following lines with their respective sections. So what we can do is just copy and paste down in here. And I'm going to remove the excess bases like so. And then what we can do is we want to take, well, let's see, actually I think that is pretty much everything. So if we really wanted to, we could, you know, move this, the net driver up to this section here, but I think that is basically it. So we make sure we set the online subsystem EOS to be enabled. Then we want to make sure we set the online system that, system that we're doing to EOS. So I removed a D there, so it's going to be default platform service. EOS. Then we set the net driver for it. And this is going to be peer to peer sockets. Uh, we're not going to actually, yeah, because we're not going to be having any sort of dedicated server testing. So we're going to leave peer to peer sockets enabled. So that pretty much sums up all we have to really do. If there are any changes, I'll make an edit to this video. But, anyways, once we have that, we want to go ahead and create a simple game instance. And that game instance is going to control everything that we need to do. So that's going to be our creating the sessions, finding the sessions, destroying the sessions, and all that kind of stuff. So that way we can connect players to each other using Epic Online Services. We had over C++ classes. We're going to create a new one here. So I'm going to right click, new C++ class. In this one, if we search for our show all classes and we search for game instance, we can select game instance. I'm going to select public just so it categorizes my code a little bit better and give this a name of EOS game instance, just as an indication that this game instance is using, well, obviously EOS. All right. So as you can see here, we now have a public and a private section in our IDE. Let's go ahead and launch the header and the .cpp and Create a constructor. Nothing to really put in it there. And now we want to basically, in normal actors, we would override something called begin play. In this case, we do not have a begin play. If we look at uGame instance, I'm mostly looking at it because I don't remember what exactly it is called. Uh, it is called. Doo -doo 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 yes. So we want to call init. So we want to override this function here. So we want to call init, and I think that's pretty much it. So on shutdown, for example, we could what we could do is if we have any sessions, you know, set up, we could destroy them, that kind of stuff. But for now, we just want to override init and add our functionality into it. So we're going to do virtual void init and override it. Create the definition and make sure you call super on it. And here we want to construct some basic things. So for the time being, we're not going to be binding any delegates for when the creation of the uh, session is successful and that kind of stuff. Well, actually, yeah, we may. Well, I'll just have to see. I'm not sure how long this is actually going to take. So anyways, we want to be able to use the online sessions. So we need to include, well, the first thing we can include actually is interfaces. We search for session and online. Nothing comes up. So what we need to do is head over to our build.cs, go to our public dependency module names, add range, and we want to add a couple things to the end here. So what we want to add at first off is the online subsystem. 
Then we want to add the online subsystem EOS. So we want to make sure we added both of these to the end. Go ahead and save it. And now we should be able to include, if it ever decides to refresh itself. All right, I'm going to give it a minute. Okay, so it finally caught up. We want to include interfaces online session interface. We also want to include the online subsystem.h as well. So now that we have that, what we can do is go ahead and try to get the online subsession or the online session interface. So let's see, it's like I online look, I online session. I don't think that's right. We'll just keep looking, I online session pointer, online session. So that's going to equal I online session pointer get. Okay, and this return, do, do, do. okay, so that's going to be an actual pointer. Wait, no. I do, do, do. Let me double check. I want to go to the documentation real quick. Alrighty, I goofed a bit. So basically you get each of your interfaces through the online subsystem. So we want to switch this up. So for example, if we get the online subsystem, online subsystem, I'm going to set that equal to I, online subsystem, get. And I'm going to actually wrap this. No, I don't want to wrap it. And I'm going to actually store this inside the header. So let's go to the header, and I'm going to make a protected section for everything related to it. So let's see, is this a class? Yes, it is. So we should be able to for declare our on I online subsystem. Okay. So then, if online subsystem is valid, there is no as valid. So we're just going to do a normal. Pointer check. So if online subsystem, that will allow us to then get our online session interfaces. So from here, we can go if I online session pointer session pointer equals online subsystem get session interface. And from here, we have access to basically everything that it contains in here. So for example, we can create a session, we can destroy a session, find sessions, and all that kind of stuff. So basically, the so this works the same as the online, well, it's just the online subsystem. It's nothing fancy. I have a full series on this, actually. And if you were to follow that series and do all the pre-setup that I mentioned just for this series, you would have a working EOS, well, lobby system. So, or not a lobby system, a session system. So that's basically how it works. Like there's really nothing special about it. So the online or the EOS plugin for online sessions is basically a big wrapper that allows us to use online sessions the same, except we can use them through EOS. We can switch it to use through Steam. We can use the null subsystem, anything we want very easily. So now what we're going to end up wanting to do is for starters, we can attempt to create a session and bind a delegate to it for when the session is completed. Now, by default, that will fail because if you remember from the test projects or the sample projects that were provided, whenever we would go to log on, we would have to approve the project, like through our dev portal, basically. So we're going to go ahead and get that set up, and I'll show you what that looks like. So one thing we're going to want to do is I'm going to create a separate function just for this. It's going to be, oh, let's make it blueprint callable, make it easy in case we decide to use a basic uh, widget for this. Void, create session. And in here, we want to do basically this. So if online subsystem, when I get the session pointer, we want to create a session. And we can look at the parameters here. So that takes in the hosting player number. That's going to be zero for us. The name of the session. I'm just going to call it test session. 
And then we have the F online session settings. So F online session settings, session settings. So this is complaining. F online session settings is incomplete. Can I go to it? Yes, I can. And that leads us to the online session settings.h. So we want to include that. So hashtag include online session settings.h. And that'll fix that complaining there. Now let's set some stuff in our session settings. So session settings not. We can go through B is dedicated equals false. You should advertise equals true. Uh, I know I want it to be a land match, so B is land match equals true. Go down here, just keep going, number of public connections. Let's set that to something like five. Keep going down, allow drone of progress equals true. I don't think that's going to matter because we're not really necessarily going to start the session. And just do do. There should be something for using presence. Be allowed to join via presence equals true. And do do do. B uses presence equals true. So that should be everything you need there. And then we can just pass in our session settings as the third parameter for create session. Now we can bind a delegate to this. So session pointer. Uh, let's see, it was a uh, create on create session complete delegate. So this is a delegate that's fired when a session create request has completed. So we want to create that and do dot. We want to bind a U object. First parameter is going to be our own class, so this. And then we need the function name that we're binding it to, or the function that we're going to be binding it to. However, we don't know what that is. Like, we don't know what parameters it takes. So I'm going to control click and go to our delegate here. Here we have create session. Go to on create session complete. And as you can see, it takes in a F name and a Boolean. So session name and bool B was successful. So we're going to go to our header here and do a void on create session complete and pass in those two parameters. So our F name and our Boolean. Create the definition. And I'm just going to print out a log. So UV log. Log temp, warning, text, success, percent D, and B was successful. So that way we can see if this either succeeded or it failed. So we want to pass in the address of this function as our second parameter to bind the U object to it. So from here, after init, well, actually, we can do this from Blueprint very easily. We're just going to create a simple widget that when we click a button, we simply create a session. So we're going to make sure we call that. And then on create session complete, what we also want to do is I'm going to copy this whole section here, paste it into on create session complete, remove create session. Actually, we're going to remove everything inside. And what we're going to do is session pointer. We want to, if we look for create session, clear on create session complete delegates and pass in this. So this will prevent us from having multiple delegates bound to fire whenever we finish creating a session. So if we call this function three times and we didn't have this, when the session would be completed on the third attempt, this would spam three times because it would fire three times because we bound three delegates to it. Let's go ahead and head over to Unreal Engine. We're going to close it down and relaunch. And once we're in here, we are good to go. We want to go ahead and create a widget and set it to use our new game instance. So in my content root, I'm just going to create a user interface widget blueprint, w underscore, uh, let's just, I guess, EOS. I don't know what to call it. And I'm just going to set up a vertical box that I can slap a bunch of buttons into. So I'm going to anchor it to the left side, make it fill it. So zero, 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 zero. Make the X size big. Let's do, I don't know, 250. Add a button and add text inside that button. And that text is going to be black so I can read it a little bit easier. That was not the right color. There we go. And I'm going to call this one create 
session. Then I'm going to give this button a name, B underscore create session. Keep it simple. All right, let's head down here to on clicked. So when we click create session, what we want to happen is we want to get the game instance. We want to cast it to our EOS game instance. And from here we can call create session. So our blueprint callable function, which was this guy right here. So now we just have to go to project settings, search for instance, go to game instance class, set it to be EOS game instance, save it. And then to be lazy, I'm just going to create the widget inside of our level. So open level blueprint. Actually better yet, we have our character right here. We'll just do it inside of that. So third person character, quit opening on the other screen. Oh my gosh, that's really annoying. All right, so on begin play, what I want to do is do a check. So is locally controlled just to make sure that we are the person that is controlling this character. So when we get on a testing with multiple, this won't be a problem. Just going to do a simple branch. And if this is true, we want to create the widget. So we're going to do create widget. We're going to create our widget underscore EOS. I guess it doesn't matter. And then we want to add it to the viewport. From here, we want to, to make it easier for us. We're going to go ahead and get our player controller. And this can actually be our owning player for the widget too. We want to set input mode to UI only. And widget and focus, we can just set to this guy. And then we want to show mouse cursor. So set, show mouse cursor, set it to true. Compile and save. Make sure we go ahead and save all and go to the output log. All right, let's hit play. And that can be ignored. And hit create session. So we hit it. Cannot create session. Test session. User is not logged in. And then it fails. So that, again, because we are not actually logged in. So we want to make sure we're logged in before we even can create a session. However, we have the basic framework. So once we log in, this should be OK. Because as you can see, it actually did fire off the error or the warning telling us that we're not logged in, we can't actually really do anything. So that is going to be all for this video. In the next one, we're going to set up logging in. And now that we have the basics of everything laid out, we should be able to very rapidly set up the destroying of a session and the finding of sessions very quickly. So I will see you in that video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below, where I have a few different series just for Patreons. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.